are the mind control projects and the satanic ritual abuse projects um, to help people who've been through that. And um, the number of times when people have been through satanic ritual abuse and all the rest of it that they talk about Rept in, reptilian, in reptilian terms about what they experienced. And these were some pictures um, drawn by someone who went through satanic ritual abuse of um, the kind of things that she remembers from what happened in the rituals. And again, as, and the reason the therapist sent these to me with the person's permission, of course, was because she was constantly drawing reptilian imagery because that's what she experienced um, in the ritual. And if you remember um, Rosemary's Baby, that film of the 60s, which was um, directed by Roman Polanski, and shall we say he should bloody know, um, with Mia Farrow, and um, she was manipulated by a satanic family to be impregnated, to give birth to this, this child. And at the end of the movie, when you saw briefly the child in the crib, which was a hybrid, it had reptilian eyes very uh, clearly. And... Um, like I say, Roman Polanski should know. So this um, uh, theme of possession goes way, way back through history. And it's possession um, through, um, overwhelmingly in this case, uh, vibrational compatibility because of this interbreeding. There you go. Good old tone. So what they're talking about him being the first president of Europe now. Crikey, it gets worse, doesn't it? Um, Mr. Fake Smile, Mr. Fake Emotion. One of the things I've noticed about these people, and when I was in the Green Party years ago in Britain, I, I, I saw a number of British politicians close up, and you see their dark eyes, and you see something else. Their eyes and their, their face don't talk the same language, as I call it. You know, it's, an, it's funny how people are, how, are famous or infamous for their massive smile, like Obama and Blair. But when you see the big smile, look at the eyes. Hillary Clinton's a classic. The big smile, the eyes never smile. Cold, steely eyes. But what's behind these people? Just a touch vibrationally out of human sight, behind the painted smile. This guy, Ted Heath. When I, he was Prime Minister of Britain from 1970 to 1974. He was the guy that signed us into the European Union. Um, major person involved in the Bilderberg Group and various other things. And I wasn't into any of this stuff at the time. I was a national spokesman for the British Green Party. And uh, I, um, I, was in, I was asked to go and speak on this election program um, on Sky News years ago, back in the 80s, 89 it was. And um, I, I arrive and the lady takes me into this makeup room and we go through the door and it appears to be empty. She says, someone will be along in a minute and walks out. So I sit down in the chair, I'm looking at the mirror and I catch someone just to my right and I look across and it's this bloke who'd just been um, interviewed on the program and he was sitting there waiting to have the makeup taken off. So, you know, cheery bloke. I said, oh, all right, mate, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Um, and, but no word was spoken by this guy in the entire um, experience. He sat there looking at the mirror and when I said hello, he turned his chair and he looked at me. A very strange look. His, his head never moved once he turned it. Then his eyes started at the top of my head. I went slowly down my body, real slowly, to my feet, and then went back again, and then turned and looked at the mirror. And all I could say, looking back, he was scanning me. The thing was, though, when he was scanning me and I was looking at him, all his eyes, whites as well as everything else, went completely black. And what I found since is a few things. First of all, this guy was seriously into Satanism, was a major Satanist in Britain, and child abuser. I put it in my books while he was dead now, but I put all this in my books while he was alive. And a journalist rang him and said, you seen what this David Icke bloke's saying about you? And, oh, he must be mad. And that was the end of it. Because it was true. I talked to the people, many people he abused. And the other thing that I found after I had this experience and I got into this stuff after 1990 are the stories around the world of the black-eyed people of which the same story is told. These people's eyes go completely bloody black. And you know, when we look at each other, we make what we call eye contact. But when, you, when I was looking into Ted Heath's eyes, there was no point where there was any contact I, was, I, I described it <clears throat> to my family when I got home. You never, never 
believe what I've just experienced with Ted Eath. It, I said to them, it's, it was like looking into two black holes. There was no point where there was a, 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 a contact. And what I understand now, it was looking through the physical human energy field into that which um, was behind him, um, that which you never see. So we all thought these people, and if we could see not that far beyond visible light, we'd see something overshadowing these people that is uh, very different to the way they look. Oh, I love that. <laughs> hey. <laughs> they say a picture tells a thousand words, don't they? Oh, yes. And that's the other thing. And You know, what are the British royal family famous for? Emotionless behavior towards their offspring and stuff. And you find that a lot with these, not always. And again, you know, I'll throw this away, but the thing that I've more and more begun to kind of understand, uh, or at least go in, in that direction, seeking more understanding, is that because we live in a digital um, reality on one level, you know, you've seen these adverts, where the, the digital adverts now, where they put in famous actors from the past, from movies, and they put them in with modern actors in, in adverts and stuff. They don't do it so much now, but a few years ago it was very popular. And the real best ones, you can hardly tell the bloody difference, even at that level of technology. The, the, the level we're talking about in terms of the reality and the manipulation, the reality is light years beyond anything that we, we, we have here. And... You know, they talk about sentient programs in the Matrix and, you know, the woman in the red dress who appears to be absolutely like everyone else, but he's actually just a digital insert. More and more that I understand this, I'm sure there are vast numbers of digital inserts around, and I think a lot of them are these people, actually, um, that are just vehicles for, um, vehicles for this, these other entities just outside of human sight to run this reality. And it seems to me there are three types. There are those that are di digital implants. There are those people in the world who are conscious and, and have the potential to connect to consciousness but are stuck in mind, which I talked about earlier. And there are those, and thank goodness they're in increasing number as this awakening goes on, who actually are in this reality but are connecting to levels of awareness beyond it. And uh, that's where the, the, um, the change lies. Oh, Neil Haig knocked this out as a bit of a joke. Uh, the red dress um, bloodlines <laughs> of um, the uh, digital implants, maybe. This guy, Carl Sagan. What time is it? We're obsessed with time. Uh, I'm not doing too bad. Um, this guy, Carl Sagan, the cos cosmologist, he wrote um, about, in great detail, about the um, impact of reptilian genetics upon humans. Uh, and human behavior, and he wrote this book, the, the Dragons of Eden, going back to history and the talk of dragons and the reptilian and stuff, but also the reptilian genetics that is within all of us. Fundamental part of the human body, the human hologram, is, um, is reptilian genetics, and as this guy said, understanding the um, reptilian background to the, to, to the human uh, body, or the human being as he called it, is to understand so much about human behavior. The oldest part of the human brain is called the R-complex by scientists, short for reptilian brain, um, because of the reptilian input that we, we've had um, in our uh, body development. Now, there are other parts of the brain that balance out the characteristics of the reptilian brain, but if you have an infusion of greater reptilian genetics, you are going to have, obviously, a greater infusion of the um, characteristics of the reptilian genetics. And this is mainstream science when they're talking about the reptilian brain. From there, we get primitive emotional responses and emotional responses. Cold-blooded behavior and territoriality, as they call it. This is mine. I own it. I control it. A desire to control. An obsession with hierarchical structures of power, aggression, might is right, winner takes all, come from the reptilian brain. And they are absolutely the characteristics of the Illuminati families. Also from the reptilian brain, we get the 
um, survival responses, and on that level they're very good, things like fight or flight and all that stuff that gets you out of danger. So, the more we can be put into a sense of survival in our perception and state of mind, the more we are locking in to that reptilian part of the brain, and that's the kind of stadium that these people understand more than any other, and we're being locked into that all the time as we are manipulated to uh, fear not surviving in endless ways. Not just severe uh, fear